Hello, in this lecture, we're going to talk about partnerships and we're going to talk about the selling of a partnership interest. We will be able to describe the process of selling a partnership interest, create the journal entry to record the sale of a partnership interest, define the effect of journal entry to sell a partnership interest on the trial balance accounts, and explain the effect on the capital accounts of selling a partnership interest. So if we were to look at this in terms of a, of a slightly different way we can look at it, what if B sells uh, the capital interest to the partnership for cash? So now B is saying, hey, I'm gonna take off, I need to leave, and I wanna sell my partnership interest to the partnership. So now the other two partners, M and B, are going to basically buy out, I mean M and L are basically gonna buy out B in this case. So that's gonna be the arrangement of the agreement. B is gonna to, going to sell the capital account to the partners for cash of 200,000. So is cash gonna be affected? Yeah. So we're gonna think about this. First, I wanna think about the types, the part of the journal entry that we can do. Then we'll run into a problem and then we'll do some calculations to adjust for that problem. So first we're gonna say, is cash affected? And we're gonna say, yeah, cash is gonna go down because the partnership is paying B for B's interest. So the partnership is saying, hey, uh, B, we're gonna give you 200,000 for your, cap your capital account interest. Therefore, we're gonna take uh, cash down, cash is debit balance, we're gonna do the opposite thing to it, which is a credit by the amount paid. And then we know that B needs to be off the books. B's on the books for 124.2, B is no longer with us, therefore B should not have any amount in their capital accounts, Therefore, uh, that's a credit. We need to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it, which would be a debit of the 124.2. So now uh, uh, the partnership paid 200. B is going to be off the books at uh, 124.2. We have a difference here. So we have a difference, and that's going to be a debit. That debit's going to have to be divided in some way between M and L. Now you might be saying, well, once again, well, if B. Uh, has a 124.2 interest in the partnership, why is it that the partners would pay 200,000 to pay off the capital account balance? And, and again, there could be multiple reasons. It could be that there's uh, some kind of goodwill in the partnership that's not being reported in the book, some type of intangible assets. It could be that they, they really want to uh, uh, let, let uh, B go and they're willing to pay more uh, in order to do that. So there could be multiple reasons for that. But once again, that's an agreement between the partnership in this case and B. So uh, they, those things will very rarely match. Now we need to figure out how to allocate that difference, how to allocate that plug. So we have our MB and L, which is a 30, 20, 50 ratio that we discussed before between the three, two, five, 30%, 20%, 50%. Here's the same capital account. So here's the capital accounts here. Here's the capital accounts represented in terms of a table. Book value of the company, 540. That's equivalent to the assets, cash, less the uh, liabilities, representing uh, accounts payable in this case. And then the new income and loss ratio. So now we have to say, well, B's gone. Therefore, we can't allocate between M and L between a 30-50 because it needs to add up to 100 or 1. So we need to come up with a new ratio. So if we look at this, we have, if we had a 3-2-5 ratio and now the 2 is gone, we can think of it as a 3-5 ratio. So if we think about our new ratio then, we could think that we have a 3 out of um, a 3 plus 5 is 8 divided by 8. So our new ratio would be 0.375 or 37.5% for M. And then if we think about uh, L, L had five over the three plus five or eight. So we can say that we have a 0.625 or a 62.5. So our new ratio that we're gonna allocate uh, this amount by, this difference by, will be the 37.5 uh, 37 and the 20 and the 62.5. So now we're gonna allocate this difference. So that difference being the 200,000 cash received minus the capital account to take them off the books, 124.2, and that's the 75.8, and we're gonna allocate it times the 0.375 M, and that's gonna give us the 28,425. And then we'll do the same thing over here. Of course, the difference will be the other, but we'll do the calculation just for the fun of it. 758 times the 0.625, 
That gives us the 47, 375. And of course, the 28, 425 plus the 47, 375 equals the 75, 800. So we're going to allocate the plug, the 75, 800 in uh, the in 28, 425 and 47, 375 M and L respectively. If we look at the journal entry, then it would look like this. We're going to debit N's capital account, 28, 425 and debit L's capital account, 47, 375 and we'll see what the effect on the trial balance will be this time. All right, so here's the same journal entry we have, and this is our chart of accounts, and of course, here's that table that we are looking at. Let's see what would happen if we posted this transaction. What would happen to the capital accounts? Does it do what we expect it to do? What do we expect it to do? We expect the Indian capital accounts to be M122775, B is gonna be gone, L is going to be at 217, 225 to give us a total capital count or book value of 340. All right, so B's capital count, we're going to debit for the 124.2. So here's B, has a credit. We're doing the opposite thing to it, debiting it, making it go down to zero. Cash, uh, cash is going to go down. So cash has a debit balance. We're doing the opposite thing to it, crediting it. Cash in the partnership will go down to 350. And M, has a credit balance in the capital account. We're doing the opposite thing to it, debiting the capital account, making it go down to 122,775. And L has a credit in the capital account, like all capital accounts, and it goes down with, because we're doing the opposite thing to it, which is a debit to 217,275. So note that the new capital accounts still equal the book value of the company. So the assets of 350,000 minus the liabilities of 10,000 still add up to the M and L's capital accounts at this time.